Hi, little guys. Hi. You want some ice treats? It all started with rescuing animals that had special needs. And for 15 years now, Bob Williams and his team have been learning their stories. So this is Daisy. She came to us with a broken neck. They learn and love these animals and teach other people to love them too. It's just great to see them and the animals who have similar paths, similar stories um, interact. It's, a, it's beautiful to just see. I designed a program with the help of professionals to be able to partner abusing neglected animals with abused and neglected kids. They don't mess around when it comes to their hay. On a typical week, these stalls are filled with kids who've come for counseling. Veterans with PTSD and abuse victims help with feeding and chores. They come here to slow down and take this in. What are you doing? But Williams wanted to do more, to serve more people, people many often don't see. So they expanded. We were full within the first week. And then the calls started coming in. And then I started out saying, okay, you know, we need 10 more beds. And then I went to 25, and then I went to 35, and now it's at 50, right? And, and But we could use 100 more beds. What you're looking at is the first safe house in the country fully dedicated to male sex trafficking victims. You have 13, right? Bob's House of Hope. You can take it. Okay. I was adopted at the age of four. This victim adopted. agreed to tell me their story. We've hidden their identity. We had six other children. I was kind of the outcast, so I was the one who was always in trouble and all types of stuff. And when my parents finally got tired of it, they um, put me on drugs at the age of nine. And at the age of 12, they actually, they were the ones who sold me to my trafficker. They said the first time it happened and was after a concert with their dad. He just left me there after the concert and uh, this one person just picked me up. I started getting older and um, it started happening more. Uh, I finally realized what was happening. And I didn't want to tell anybody because I was embarrassed. And I didn't want to tell anybody because I was scared too. They went through middle school and high school here in North Texas, addicted to hard drugs and forced into sex trafficking. By the time they were 18, they were homeless. They called a friend only after surviving a third overdose that put them in a coma. This is, that's normal. I mean, what you were told, all of them have been through that or something very similar to it. Landon Dixon is the executive director here at Bob's House of Hope. It's not just Texas. We're serving all over the country. The calls usually come from law enforcement and other agencies that just don't know what to do with victims when they're men. Nobody is specialized in this. Nobody even thinks of this. They're having to bend protocols and procedures and find new ways of doing things because it's never even occurred to them that it could be a male being trafficked. The cases are underreported across the board, but for males, ignorance dwindles those numbers even further. In 2012, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crimes estimated more than a fourth of human trafficking victims are males. In 2017, the U.S. State Department released this PSA, estimating about half of the world's human trafficking victims as males, citing the illegal commercial sex industry as the most common form here in the United States, but acknowledging most programs and resources are tailored for female victims. For example, the process of collecting evidence after a man or boy has been assaulted. A young man who needed a SANE exam, and the doctor said, well, we don't know how to do that, so kicking you out. A SANE exam, sometimes called a rape kit, is the first step in a victim getting justice against their attacker. Dixon says the greatest barrier to taking that step is a lack of understanding about who these victims are and what this crime actually looks like. A lot of people think this is a strictly gay issue, and it's not. Homosexuality doesn't really play into it when it comes to abuse. Many victims do identify as part of the LGBTQ plus community, but many don't. It's about exploitation. It's about power. It's about money. It's about control. It's not actually about sex. Like with female victims, it hides under the label of prostitution, blending in with online sex ads. In these cases, it is often written off as promiscuity, with secrecy anchored in fear. The traffickers tell them that. People are just going to think that you're gay. People are just going to think that you're whatever the case may be. And 
But that is part of what keeps them silent. And for those who survive, mm -hmm. years of abuse, addiction, and trauma take years to heal. The risk to suicide, self-harm, substance abuse, lifelong addiction issues, mental health challenges is exponentially high. Um. These stories are really hard. The second victim who wanted to tell his story tried. It's okay. We'll take a breath. Don't apologize. We'll take a breath together. <laughs> He's only been at the house for a few months. It happens more than often. The details were too much. Uh, sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. That's okay. The kind of trauma reaction that you're seeing is the product of repeated abuse. It's a billion dollar business. The boys in our program have been trafficked since they were mid-teens and some as young as eight. When you look at that issue, right, and then they turn 18, how do you help them? Here, they offer hope for recovery from addiction, healing from abuse, framework for a real life. I didn't even think I was going to make it the first month. I was already trying to leave. Remember our first victim? They're doing well in school and celebrating sobriety milestones. I'm excited for my future when I get to the point in this program where I can be independent that I can pay forward the love and the care and help another person out. Stories like these are starting to bloom at Bob's House of Hope, signs of success. They beat me. Yeah. <laughs> but before they can get there, they have to be found. My bad, I'm sorry. We have to see them. It was nice to meet you. You too. Thank man. you for doing this with me, I appreciate it. In North Texas, I'm Morgan Young. some admirable work being done there. If you or someone you know may be a victim of trafficking, there is help. Specially trained advocates are available to talk 24-7. You can call them at 888-373-7888 or text the word HELP to 233733.